Welcome to Partners in Healthcare. My name is Gary Removich, Director of the Physician Assistant Program here at Wingate University. And today we're going to be talking to four students that have currently enrolled into our Physician Assistant Program. We have two with us now and momentarily we'll have another two. And uh, I'd like to welcome you both. Thank you very much for being here with me. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. We have uh, Jamie Holbrook as well as Eric Zufall. And uh, tell me a little bit about yourselves. How did you become interested in, uh, in becoming a PA? And let's start with Jamie. Um, I have a little bit of history in healthcare. I was a nurse for four years and really enjoyed working with patients and people in general and healthcare, medicine, but always had the urge and desire to take it a little further and always had the, the will to learn. and. Um, took a liking to some of the PAs, really respected them um, that I interacted with in the hospitals and decided that that was going to be a good track for me. So Very good. And what uh, sort of uh, positions were you in as a nurse? I worked in, I started out in neurosurgery in the ICU at Wake Med and from there I became a traveling nurse and uh, went all over the United States Pretty cool, four different locations and in different intensive care units. Very good, super. Yes. How about you, Eric? Well, I got my first taste of healthcare when I was 15 and my oldest brother broke his neck in a diving accident. Goodness. And when he came home from the hospital, my first job as a 15 year old was, I was his home healthcare aide, uh, so to speak. Um, and uh, I, that was the beginning of my interest in just healthcare in general. When I went to college, I, uh, had a, I was pursuing a degree in biology thinking I would go on to medical school. And during that time, I got involved with a uh, college ministry that kind of redirected me during that time. I had an opportunity to come on staff with them after I graduated. And I thought, well, maybe I'll do that for a few years and then go to medical yes. school. And uh, instead, I ended up doing that for 10 years and uh, met my now wife and we started our family. And kind of during that time, I also began to find out more about the physician assistant role and just started hearing about it more and met some physician assistants. And uh, the healthcare bug, I guess you could say, the interest in sure. was still in me and I still really wanted to get back to that. And so just a few years ago, I, uh, transition from my time in the ministry after 10 years to working as an EMT with medic. Went to school, class, got my EMT, uh, worked with medic here in Charlotte for um, uh, two years and during that time just began to continue to look into the physician assistant profession and the more I saw about it the more I loved and, and decided that's where I wanted to be. Very good. Um, how did you become interested in uh, Wingate's PA program? Jamie. Um, one of my favorite things about the PA as a profession is the team aspect of it, um, working with other individuals for the same cause and care of patients is, is a great thing and P, uh, Wingate's program is very team emphasized yes. and in doing my research of different schools um, when I was applying came across Wingate, which happens to be somewhat close to home, which was a great plus, but they utilized a team nature of study and training and just working together that I really appreciated. And I wouldn't take anything back. I'm so happy Very to be good. here and I feel like this is the program for me. Very good. Mm -hmm. How about you, Eric? I think what stood out to me the most was uh, Wingate's motto of the university as a whole is knowledge, faith, and service. Yes. And to me, when I saw that, that captures, to me, a holistic aspect of a person. Um, knowledge is your mind, your thinking, faith, your heart, your beliefs, and then service your hand, what you do. And that integration, I saw the, the PA program say, that is what a, a clinician is too. Someone who uh, goes to a patient to, to treat them holistically. Um, who is compassionate with their heart, who is competent with their mind, but also comprehensive in seeking to apply uh, health care to the whole person. Yes. And, uh, and I saw that in their mission statement. I saw that in the faculty that I talked with and the students that I 
met with who were, uh, of, who were already students here. And the more of that that I saw, and the more I saw how that was such a great fit with what I believe in as well. Very good. Um, one of the things that's interesting is that both of you have uh, are officers in the, um, in the student body uh, of the PA program. Uh, how did that happen, Eric? Well, um, because you're the president. I am. You? I am the president. Uh, sometimes I am really thankful for it. Sometimes I think I should have passed that one on to someone else. But uh, overall, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, we, uh, the first week, um, the student body of last year spoke to us and they shared the opportunities that there was to, to be involved um, on a deeper level, I guess, uh, in, in trying to um, serve the student body as a whole, but serve the, Wing the Wingate program as well as representing to the, uh, the overall American Association of Physician Assistants. And uh, to me, the more I uh, thought about it, the more it just seemed like a great leadership opportunity for just personal development, um, as well as just it would, it would kind of force me to be connected to the students that I'm in the classroom with and also the faculty members. And uh, sure. it was just a good motivator for me to say, okay, well, I'll put my name on the board and, and see what happens. And we had a class election and that was kind of how Lo it Lo and behold. Came behold. <laughs> yes. I actually got it. Very good. <clears throat> Jamie, what is your position? Um, well, I actually feel like I can attribute it to you, Eric. <laughs> um, the same uh, conversation also with the previous class in the beginning had mentioned to me, I'd asked them what they regret looking back at their first year and they told me that they regretted not having more socialized time together, not getting to know each other outside of studies. Yes. And I went home and thought about that a little bit, a little bit and by the end of that night had sent an email out um, inviting people to join in for some volleyball outside one day and um, a potluck lunch where everybody brings a dish and we all have lunch together and not study, you know? Yes. And um, I think the next morning Eric screamed, oh, well, I think we got our new social coordinator. Very good. <laughs> and lo and behold, here she is. <laughs> But, but it's important. It's important well, sure. that we are able to know each other on a different yes. level and relax together and, mm. you know, have that bond. Very good. Now, how do you find time to, to be involved in these extracurricular things, social activities, being uh, the class president, uh, having a family with uh, three kids, uh, having all sorts of responsibilities, and, uh, and still going through a rigorous program? So how do you find time, Jamie? Well, you lose a little sleep. <laughs> you go ahead and eliminate that one. And you go into this program knowing that you're going to be sacrificing quite a bit of free time and sleep. And, but you have to go in with the goal and the want and the desire and the love for what you'll be studying and knowledge that, that it's worth it. Very good. <laughs> Eric, anything you'd like to add? I'm still trying to figure out how to find that time, but uh, I, I think that um, uh, having my family's support has helped because otherwise I really would feel guilty about spending a little extra time here and there on different things. And, um, you know, the first thing before I ever said that I would even consider doing the presidency role um, was I went to my wife and I said, what do you think if I get this? Is that okay? Should I even put my name up there? Because I won't if you don't want me to. And just knowing she was there to say, yeah, you know, whatever, you know, ultimately what you believe God is leading you to do. And so I think that was another thing is just a lot of prayer. Sure. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people talk about, well, how did Jesus do all he did? Because he had 24 hours in a day. Sure. And same as we do, uh, and yet somehow was able to do a lot. And, and so I think prayer has been a big part of it right. too. And he took time to pray. Yeah. And went off on his own to do that. Um, this has been six weeks that have been very packed full of information and testing and all sorts of activities. Um, looking back on it, what, what is the most interesting thing that you've discovered about yourself while you've been here at the uh, PA program? Jamie. Um. <laughs> I think that I can take on a lot more than I thought I ever could. 
um, amidst the study load yes. and the whole new lifestyle change that just happens in the blink of an eye that you're just you just have to take on without looking back. Um, there's always going to be bumps, and it's it amazes me that how how we can adjust and keep on going and how everything just will fit together yes. and be okay. <laughs> so you're telling me you're not just a survivor, you are a thriver. You're I am. Thriving through and this. I look back and I, I'm smiling still. Yes. Yeah. It's going, we can do it. We Very can good. all do it. <laughs> what do you think, Eric? Well, I think that uh, uh, it all depends on the week you catch me, but, uh, but this week has been a particularly hard week for me. Yes. Uh, in, in the classroom in a, few, in a few lectures in particular, it's kind of the first time that I felt like, whoa, can I really do this? Um, and I think I've realized about myself that I'm much more of a, a concrete thinker than I used to think I was just a few weeks ago. Um, I thought I was a little more open-minded and, and could kind of roll with the vagueness of things. But uh, some of the classes like anatomy and physiology that are very exact and, and you memorize this, I can do that. But medicine's a whole lot more than that. There's art to it as well as science. And it's the art aspect that I'm finding a lot, a lot more difficulty grasping. And I think I'll get there, but uh, because I think I'm kind of on the cusp of what you're sharing is, is I, I think I'm gonna grow and stretch to that yes. point where I can understand that more easily. But, uh, but right now I'm kind of coming up against that and it's challenging. Very good. Um, challenging in a good way because yes. you're gonna grow through this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, as someone is watching our program, and perhaps they've thought, you know, maybe I'd like to be a, a PA, but, uh, but I don't know if I really have what it takes to, to do it. What, what would be some of the recommendations you would make for them, Eric? I think I would say, uh, first of all, that uh, get around other PAs and other PA students and make it a point to initiate to them um, spend some time around them, ask them for coffee, um, buy them a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, students especially, buy them a cup of coffee, they would love to have that. Um, go to different schools, even if you're not interviewing, just go to visit, schedule a visit to come in. Um, I know I've seen Dr. Yuremovich meeting with potential applicants, they haven't even applied, they're just interested in finding out more about what a PA program looks like. We have high school students coming into our classroom sometimes just observing. Um, so I think get around it as much as you can and talk to the people who are in the midst of it. Very good. What recommendations would you make, Jamie? Um, definitely the same. Definitely actually meet some PAs and talk to them and, and know what the profession entails. Um, come to a few classes. Actually come in and sit down and watch the professors teach and, and get a, a feeling for the workload you, you will be taking on if you follow that path. Um, I feel if you're going to pursue this study and this career that you should have a passion for it mm. because it's not something that you easily take on, okay, I'm going to go to PA school. No. You have to want it in order to take on this workload. Very good. Yeah, I think I would also just echo that too. You know, the, the PA profession is one of the fastest growing professions yes. in the nation and with the different uncertainties about the economy and the job market, I think a lot of people are looking to healthcare because of security. Sure. And I would just, I would challenge people to be careful about that. Um, to not just go into healthcare, go into the PA profession because it's secure. Go to it because you feel a calling to it, because you have a passion for it, uh, because it's a fit for you. And it can be incredibly rewarding. And there are lots of different ways in healthcare that you can go. And so I think, um, find what fits you Very in good. that sense. And that's where getting around others who do it is, is really good. a great way to find out. Well, Jamie, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. And you too, Eric, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll take a short break and then we'll return with a couple of other students. Thank you. Welcome back to Partners in Healthcare. My name is Gary Uremovich. Program Director for the Physician Assistant Program here at Wingate University. And I have another two students with us that have just matriculated into the PA program. First, we have Suzanne Hawthorne, and we also have Josh Russ. 
Thank you both for joining us. Well, thank you, Thanks Dr. Yorinovich. And please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became interested in becoming a PA. And let's start with Josh. Um, well, just a little bit of background about me, I guess. I uh, originally was a business major. Uh, I started a business about uh, three or four years ago. Um, prior to that, I had a lot of healthcare experience in various forms. And really, you know, even throughout my college career, really felt a, a passion and a, and a pull towards being in healthcare. Yes. Um, and then I began to really learn about the PA profession. Um, after starting my business, I really just wanted to pursue the PA field. And so that allowed me the time, um, you know, since I was my own boss, to be able to take classes here and there and to really uh, focus and, and, and pursue um, the calling. And so, um, and that's what I did. That's how I got here. And um, that's basically it in a nutshell. And what sort of clinical experience uh, did you have? Uh, for about a year and a half, I worked as a physical therapy technician. Yes. I worked in inpatient, outpatient. I got to see uh, people, um, patients, after they had had their um, surgeries come into our outpatient clinic and we rehab them. And then we'd go into the, into the hospital and do a lot of wound care, um, a lot of you know, just basic modality, gait training type things with, yes. with the really sick people. So I got to see a really good mix. I also worked with little uh, kids in wheelchairs. I worked as a... Um, a pediatric seating specialist and so really got to see a lot of really neat things that way yes um, so it was, it was really neat good I have a, a, a pretty good mixture of different things very good experiences yes Suzanne how did you become interested in becoming a PA uh, I also have a business background um, have one graduate degree already but kind of a lifelong learner so um, I'm excited to be in school again. Uh, I really, in business, was not as fulfilled as I thought I might be. Mm -hmm. um, took some time off to raise a family, and I also opened a business, and um, just really still felt a calling uh, towards the PA field, which I learned about when I was first in graduate school, but had already taken a different path, and a different job offer came my way, and it kind of changed things. And then I saw an article about Dr. Yurimovich and um, called him when I learned about the new PA program at Wingate. It was close to my home. It was like a sign to me that I needed to ex explore this a little bit more. And he was nice enough to chat with me one day. And um, I'm not a traditional student at this age. It's, it's my turn, though. My kids are grown, and um, it's time for me to actually discover what I'm supposed to do in this world, and Dr. Yurimovich didn't discourage me. And so I began the journey into the sciences from business, and uh, the first day of the first class knew I was in the right place. Um, the thing about the PA profession that drew me, uh, my whole life has been about service. I've been involved in so many volunteer organizations, um, and the PA profession is that's a big piece of who a PA is, is the service. So I really felt drawn to that piece of it. In fact, all my clinical hours were done in, in volunteer settings. Um, I volunteered at various hospitals and um, at the community health center, which was just very fulfilling for me. I knew I was in the right place. Um, after I spoke with Dr. Yurimovich, I shadowed quite a few PAs to make sure that, just to make sure again, that it was the right thing for me. Um, from urgent care to orthopedics to every kind of PA you can imagine. And um, I knew I'd be happy in, in this position. It's, there's a lot of variety to it, which I think I require. Um, the training is very rigorous, and Wingate's program, I'm just excited to be here. Well, it's great to have you both with us. Thank you very much. And what has, uh, has surprised you about the courses that you're taking here at Wingate? Is there something that uh, really ha you found remarkable? Uh, about uh, about the program itself? Um, you know, the course load, there's, there's really no way that you can expect what you're going to get when you get here. Um, you know, from the time that I got accepted, I'm sure from the time every one of us got accepted, we were just really anticipating what it would be like, um, you know, ha not having any idea. Uh, and then, you know, we're presented with all the courses that we're going to be taking. Um, and it was just, there's just really no way to prepare for it. So the thing that's really stuck out to me has been, you know, the volume of information that we've been given 
but the fact that you know it's been taught to us in a way that we can you know really retain it we mm -hmm. really understand it. the professors are really great at just kind of you know laying it out for you if you have a question about something regardless of how small you might think it is if it's hindering you from you know really grabbing an, uh, an aspect of something or really learning something ask the question and they'll They'll, they'll clarify it for you. So that's what's been really the kind of thing that's really helped me out the most uh, is just you know, knowing that the professors are there to, to back me up with, with the volume of, of information that we have. Just the years of experience that they have in the medical field, the doctors have years of experience, mm -hmm. of clinical experience, and it makes learning for us that much easier because they know exactly what we need to know in the clinical setting. Um, and they don't mess around. They mm -hmm. tell you what you need to know to treat a patient to the best of your ability, and they pick out those little facts that you need to have to be a good PA, and they uh, want you to succeed. And that's, that was a key thing for me, that the whole program is there to make sure that we succeed at what we do. Um, you feel a lot of strength behind you to get you through it. Very good. One of the things that uh, we really pride ourselves on um, here at Wingate in the PA program is the team-based learning format. Uh, could you explain a little bit about uh, what, what that means? Well, they place you on a team with people after you take a personality test and they, they place you with people that are totally different from you, which is interesting, an interesting learning experience <laughs> for all of us. And uh, team-based learning I love because when we do readings, and we take a lot of tests, um, a different person from the team will pick up something different based on their clinical experience and their background, uh, something that interested them in the reading. And so we take some tests together as a team, and it's really phenomenal what you learn from each other um, based on what they picked up that you didn't. So I think we get the material quicker doing that. Mm -hmm. but it, and it's a challenge sometimes to learn to work with all different kinds of people, but we all need to learn that. It's great. Now, I believe in your particular team, there's a majority are extroverts right. uh, in your team. So how are the dynamics in, in your team? Well, everyone, um, for the most part, really wants to speak their opinion. Yes. Um, extroverts, for anyone who doesn't know, is, uh, is a person who really, really likes to talk and be involved and you know, very outgoing socially. Sure. Um, and so we are all very outgoing socially. Um, and so when we come across something that we may not all agree on, it's going to really get voiced. And so that's just where your, your, your conflict resolution comes in. Your conflict resolution skills come into play. Being able to, you know, see a problem that you all have, work through it, and then ultimately arrive at the right answer. Because at the end of the day, your grade is going to reflect whether or not you were able to work out whatever issue you had. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, being a you know being on a team of, of so many you know strong hearted and strong headed people uh, you know really you know has its benefits because we are you know we're gonna we're gonna really you know, work as hard as we can uh, regardless of what it takes to get to the answer that we we feel that we need to get to very good now it's been six weeks and uh, and you've gone through this program but not only do we put you in teams but now we expect you to actually go out and provide community service. So how does that work? How can you find time to go out and serve the community? And what sort of community service are you involved in, Josh? Um, let me just say this. I'll, I'll start off with saying this. There, you can find time to do anything that you want to do. I mean, me personally, and I should have said this up front, I have two kids. Um, you know, so it's really, you know, kind of hard to, to balance things. And there's some sacrifices that are going to have to be made. So you really have to be willing to make that sacrifice. But as far as the time issue goes, you know, it's just something that there's nothing that you can't do if you really want to do it bad enough. And this is something that you're requiring of us to do. Um, but it's, you're requiring it so that we can really learn what all is out there. So it's really an enjoyable experience. But the, the, the place that I volunteer at and do my service work is a free health care clinic in Mooresville, which is my hometown. Yes. And we service um, people who can't afford insurance. And they don't qualify for you know state or federal funding. 
um, but at the same time they can't um, you know supply their own their health coverage needs and you know we have uh, a spectrum of patients who you know last week we're making you know a six-figure salary and this week they have absolutely nothing um, you know so it's been really eye-opening to me mm. um, I didn't really even know places like this existed until I began you know working with them and it was, it's just been very heartwarming you know to see all of the things that we can do the people that come to us really need to be helped and so we're we're able to reach out to the community and help them in a big way. Very good. Mm -hmm. Suzanne, what is your perspective? Well, again, you know, just like you, when I worked at the Community Health Center, um, you see a great need there, and I encourage anybody that wants to be a PA and needs clinical hours, go work mm -hmm. at your Community Health Center because um, the people need you. But they asked us to step out of our comfort zone for our service. if if we felt like that, and I did. And so I chose uh, a Alexander Youth Network, unbelievable place for uh, children in crisis. Um, I really don't have that much experience in pediatrics or with um, youth that are going through crisis, have mental health issues. Uh, and it's been eye-opening, I'll have to say. It's been eye-opening. I've learned a lot. And uh, we give presentations to the whole class about this so that our fellow PAs can know about it to refer future patients possibly to, to this kind of system. So I think it's a great thing that you require it of us. And it is, it's hard to work in. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to work in because um, there are days that I, that I need to be studying, but, <laughs> but I'm there. Very good. One of the things that's a little unique about our program as well is that uh, we only go to class four days a week during the didactic portion. Obviously, during clinical rotations, it's going to be five days a week for five weeks in eight different rotations and then two electives. Um, but um, what do you think about uh, going to class for four days, four days in a row? Uh, should it be five days or, or do, do you think that, that that is useful for it to be a four-day program? I think it's great just because I drive an hour to and from every day. So it's nice to have that day to get your service in and um, to catch up and study and I really enjoy the four day. I'd rather, I'd rather do that. I think it's great. I don't know. How do you feel? I'm usually the oddball out when it comes to things like this. Um, I, I always have mixed emotions on it but because sure. um, sometimes I would really like maybe just an extra hour or two of, of instruction just to kind of wrap up everything that we've done all week because it's all just kind of, you know, overwhelmed you for the, for, for the sure. week. But at the same time, I really enjoy being able to get up a little later on Friday, um, catching up on some sleep that I may have missed throughout the week, um, and then being able to use that day just to kind of study. It's not a day off. No, right? it's not a day off. It's yeah. not a day off. But it is a day to, you know, maybe walk around in, in your pajamas or shorts and T-shirt and just kind of hang out, read, sure. and, and, and refresh, and, and get ready for the next week. Sure. Mm -hmm. And interact with your family and friends. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Our families, I'm sure, appreciate a little bit of time on Friday sure. yes. because you don't see them a lot when you're, you're in school. It's right. a long day and there's a lot of work to be done when you get home. Yeah, we, have a, uh, we have a marshmallow roast planned this Friday. So Very we're good. Oh, good. Really forward to that. That's really awesome. To that. Yeah, that should be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure having you both with us. Uh, this is Gary Removich and I'm with Suzanne Hawthorne and Josh Russ, two of our first year students. Thank you very much for joining us. This has been Partners in Healthcare.